Hello and welcome to DV247. We're going to be taking a look at side chaining in Reason. Uh, I'm using Reason 6.5 today, but obviously all the modules you'll see here and all the techniques used can be done in Reason 7. Um, okay, so side chaining is where you use an audio source to affect the compressor. So in this instance, we're going to be using a subtractor synthesizer and it's playing a very, very simple sawtooth, um, two oscillator sound, very, very simple indeed. Okay, so using a chord structure like that, I'm going to record a couple of bars and then I'm going to be using a drum beat like this to modulate the compressor. So first off, we need to create a compressor and I'm going to be using the M-Class compressor. And what I'm going to do is show you a couple of ways of routing the side chain. Uh, now in this instance, I'm actually going to route it from the mixer up here and there's a very simple way of doing it. Now if we look at the back of the rack here uh, what we're actually going to do is send the audio out from the drum channel uh, via the auxiliary sends and then into the side chain of the M-Class compressor. So let's just flip around the back. As I'm using these sends to have the effects route into the mixer I'm actually going to use the available auxiliary send which is channel 3 and I'm going to patch it directly into the sidechain input of the compressor. Now let's record the synthesizer part that I'm going to be using to compress. So let's get the beat going as well. Okay, so here we go. Okay, a couple of fluffs, but we can obviously, via the magic of editing, take those out, as you heard there, Bosch and that one there, and also um, tighten those up, quantize them a little bit. So now... And as if by magic, my performance has become at least acceptable. Okay, so, oops, let's just flip this back to there, move it to the beginning, set our start and end point. So we've now got a two bar loop. What we need to do now is, um, you won't be able to hear the compressor affecting it because we've actually got something rooted into the side chain. So what we're gonna do is send the drums to the side chain, as remember we used the auxiliary three on here, set it up to full. So now you can hear it very clearly affecting it. Now what we're going to be doing is timing that a little bit and messing with the threshold which dictates how much compression is happening. So let's just move that back to the beginning. The release gives you control over the time it takes the pumping to happen. So if you want to pump into time, this is this is what you need to play with the most. So Okay, so once you've got that time nicely, um, you can hear that it's actually breathing in. It's actually breathing in time with the music now, and adding a bit more excitement and depth. And it also means that it gets out of the way of the kick drum, so the kick drum pops through nice and prominently. <laughs> And it gives it's quite a drastic effect. Now I can also add some 
effects in between uh, the subtractor and the compressor. In this case, I've been playing with the alligator, um, which is a filter gate which adds a bit of rhythm to the actual synthesizer sound. So I've been using this uh, Foreman Tesk uh, preset, and let's just take the phase down a bit, and you get this sort of effect. Let me just quickly take the compressor off there so you can hear it on its own. Okay, and now if we add some of the sidechain compression to that. Oops, let's take that off solo. And it adds a lot more energy to it. Let's just take it off again so you can hear and I'll, I'll, I'll toggle between the two. Now that's nice and rhythmic. That sounds great. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a few more effects um, in the form of an echo, which is up here. So it gives a bit more of a spatial depth. That's got a kind of ping pong effect going on. And I'm also going to add some unison. So it's nice and wide in the stereo field and the kick drum still is modulating it and it makes it pump through. So that's one way of doing the side chain. Another way of doing it would be to actually use a dedicated um, modulator for the compressor. Now, it's all very well having a beat that's very simple, boom, 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 like this, um, the, just the solo. But if you want to use a more complex beat, um, it actually starts to... The hi-hats as well, you can see. I'm modulating it and it doesn't actually give it the, the breathing and pumping room that you want. So this has now become a, an unsuitable source to modulate it with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the side chain and I'm going to add a re-drum uh, drum computer. I'm going to shift create that so that doesn't make any connections and I'm going to connect the output straight to the side chain input. Now you won't be able to hear the kick drum because it's actually feeding the detector circuit of the compressor here. If I monitor the side chain, you'll be able to hear what the kick drum sounds like. Of course, that's actually going through an effect, so you can actually hear the delay going on. But if I take that off, you're just using the compressor. So what I do is I just plug a simple four to the floor uh, kick drum that mimics the earlier kick drum that I had, tone that I had going through here. And if I play that, So it ducks out the way nicely, but it will can stay con it will stay continuing the simple four to the floor beats. So they actually you've got a lot more control over there, and you don't hear the kick drum going through. So that's a couple of ways that I use to sidechain. If you've got any ideas of yourself, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And um, thanks for watching.